Welcome. In this session, I would like to explain to you how to use Windows PowerShell to query the Windows Registry. The Windows Registry is a hierarchical database that stores low-level settings for the Microsoft operating system and for applications that opt to use the registry. Before I start, I need to make sure that you have a full understanding of variables, aliases, and how to use the pipeline in Windows PowerShell. If you are unsure or you would like to refresh your memory, please view one of my earlier sessions. The registry contains two basic elements. Registry keys are container objects similar to folders. Keys may contain values or further keys. Keys are referred with a syntax similar to a Windows path name, using backslashes to indicate the level of the hierarchy. And registry values are non-container objects similar to files. The registry can only be accessed from a known root key handle. These root keys are hive key classes root or hkcr contains information about registered applications. Hive key current user or hkcu stores settings that are specific to the current logged in user. Hive key local machine or hklm stores settings that are specific to the local computer. Hive key users or hku contains keys for each user profile actively loaded on the machine. And hive key current config or hkcc contains information gathered at runtime. Each value that is stored in the registry needs to have a specific data type. Data types that are used commonly are rec as z, this is a string value, rec binary, this is binary data, either a one or a zero, rec d word, this is a number between zero and four billion, and rec multi as z, a multiple string value, which is an ordered list of non-empty strings. This is a full list of value data types. If you are interested in knowing what they are, please pause the video to get a better look at them. If we would like to use PowerShell to look at information of registry keys, we can do so by using the get item property. We need to specify get item property and in the path parameter, the proper way of doing this is to specify registry colon colon, the root key and the full path of the sub keys that we are looking for. We can do a bit, le bit less typing if we just specify hklm instead of using the hive key local machine. If we only want to get the value from the registry, we can do so by using the get item property value commandlet. Please note that this commandlet is only available as of PowerShell 5.0. Again, we need to specify the full path in the path uh, property, and then we can specify the value names that we would like to have returned. If you are looking for more than one value, you can separate the value names with a comma. To write data to the registry, we can use the new item property commandlet. We need to specify the path where we would like to add the value or the key. We need to specify a name for the key. The data type needs to be specified in the property type parameter. And we need to specify the value that we would like to add. Here is an example on how to use the new item property commandlet. We call the commandlet, then we specify the path. The name is set to PowerShell test path. The value type should be a string. Please note that we can just write string instead of writing rec or sz. And lastly, we specify the value. If we would like to rename a key or a value in the registry, we can do so by using the rename item property commandlet. Again, we need to specify the path to the key that we would like to rename, the name of the value that we would like to rename, we need to specify the new name of the value. Optionally, we can specify pass through parameter. This will return what actually happened while renaming the value. This is an example on how to rename a registry value. We call the commandlet, then we specify the path. The name of the value that we would like to rename is PowerShell test path. The new name that we would like to rename the value to 
will be my test. And optional, optionally, we can specify the path through parameter to return what actually happened while renaming the value. If we need to delete an entry in the registry, we can use the remove item property commandlet. We only need to specify the key path to the value and then the name of the value that we would like to delete. If we need to modify a lot of values or keys in the registry, we can set our working location right into the Windows registry. This way we have a lot less typing. I will demonstrate this later. Okay, let's wrap this up with a couple of examples in Windows PowerShell ISE. Okay, I've opened Windows PowerShell ISE in administrator mode. We need administrative privileges to be able to write to the registry or delete items from the registry. The first commandlet that I'd like to demonstrate to you is the get item commandlet. This one can be used to get information about the file system or the registry. So I'll just run this to show you that I can use it to get information about subfolders. I can use it to get information about files and I can use it to get information about the registry. And what I'm doing is I'd like to show you what sort of properties are actually available. That's why I'm calling the get item and then selecting the object and expanding all the properties. So if I execute this, it'll show you all the property names that are, that are available to be used. Okay, up next we can use the get item property. Since we know the names now, we can specify the names that we would like to have. And to be able to do that, we need to specify the path. The proper way of doing it is specifying registry colon colon, then specifying hive key local machine. And then the sub keys are software, Microsoft, Windows NT and current version. And the values that we would like to have returned are product name and current build. So if I execute this, you will notice that I'm running on a Windows 10 machine with the current build of 10240. To do less typing, we can just specify the alias HKLM. And I've got exactly the same information that I pulled just now. I'm just calling the product name and the current build. So if I execute this, it returns the same values. Okay, up next I'd like to demonstrate the get item property value. This one is only in, available in Windows PowerShell version 5. The version, if you don't know what version you have, you can either use the variable name PS version table and then getting the PS version. And I'm just specifying or getting the PS, com PS compatibility level just to show you which um, <clears throat> versions this is compat compatible with. So you can see I'm running on PowerShell version 5 and it's compatible with version 1, 2, 3, and 5, uh, 3, 4, and 5. Another way of getting the information is the registry because these values are actually stored in the registry as well. And the key that we need to access is Hive Key Local Machine, Software, Microsoft, PowerShell, 3, PowerShell Engine, and then we have the PowerShell version and PowerShell compatibility level. So if I execute that, I get exactly the same information. So now that we know that we are running on version 5, we can actually use the get item property value. And we need to specify the path and specify the name of the values that we would like to have returned. So if I execute this, I'll get the same information as I did before without using or with using the item property. Okay, up next, I'd like to change my location, uh, my working location. I can do that by specifying the path of the registry that I would like to start off with. So I'll specify my path. And this way down here, you can actually see that I've jumped from the file system right into the registry and I've right into the key that I've specified that I'd like to be in. This way, I can just specify a dot Instead of writing out all this information, this just makes it much more easy, or much easier. All right, so if I execute that, it's much less typing, and I get the same information. To change back to the file system, I just need to set my path back to the file system, 
and that is already changed it back to the file system. Okay, for further demonstrations, I just, I'm just going to change it to a different registry value, a registry key. All right, um, I'd like to demonstrate how to create a new registry key, and I'm just going to run the get item property with a path of PowerShell path just to show you that this registry key does not exist yet. So if I run that, I'm just also specifying the error action of silently continue, just that it doesn't throw an error message at me. As you can see, I get nothing returned. So if I we use the new item property, specify the path, it's reusing the dot since we want to have the value created in that key, then specifying the name of the key of the, of the value and then the property type should be a string. And then the value, we're just using our PowerShell home variable. If I execute that, you'll notice that it's written the key value or the value into the registry. So I can get my reg registry value by just accessing get or using the get item property value to return what it has actually written into that value. Okay, if I like, to, if we need to rename a registry key or value, we can do that by using the rename item property and then specifying the path, specifying the name of the key or value that we would like to change, and then specifying the new name that we would like to have it, and then pass through will just show us the information what actually actually happened. All right. So if I get my information, I can run that and you will see that I get nothing returned since the PowerShell path does not exist anymore. And if I call the PowerShell home, PS home, that's the new name that we've set, we actually get the information that we had added earlier. To delete an item or a registry uh, key, we can use the remove item property. We just specify the path and then the name of the value that we would like to remove. If I run that, it removes the value. And if I get my property item, we'll use get property item, I get nothing returned. Well, I hope you have enjoyed the session and I'm looking forward to our next one.